My job as a sex educator involves helping people get comfortable talking about sex. It involves talking to people frankly and openly about sex. My favorite part of being a sex educator involves helping people replace sexual myths with science-based facts. And of all the myths that I correct, there is one that has the power to dramatically change sex lives for the better by empowering women to experience more sexual pleasure and by alleviating the performance pressure that interferes with so many men's sexual experiences. Correcting this one important falsehood will also help us create a world where we consider equality important not only in the boardroom, but in the bedroom as well. That myth is the idea that women should orgasm from penetration alone. Replacing this myth with the truth about women's pleasure will help us bring gender equality to our most intimate encounters. It will help us close the orgasm gap. Simply put, the orgasm gap is the fact that during heterosexual sexual encounters, the men are having way more orgasms than the women are. In one study, 91% of men versus 39% of women said they always, or usually always, orgasm during a sexual encounter. Wow, that's quite an orgasm gap. And in lieu of these real orgasms, about 70% of women have at one time or another faked orgasm. Many fake because they believe their missing orgasm is the result of a personal flaw. One young woman told me, I thought my vagina must be broken. <laughs> But this young woman's vagina is not the problem. It's our culture that's broken. It's a culture that overvalues men's most reliable route to sexual pleasure and devalues women's most reliable route to pleasure. In order for you to understand this cultural problem, I need to share a bit of sex education about women's genital anatomy and sexual pleasure. Women's genital anatomy includes internal and external parts. I won't cover all aspects of both, but I will give you enough information to understand and be part of the movement to eradicate gender inequality in the bedroom. One internal part of women's genital anatomy is the vaginal canal, the place where penises go in and babies come out. <laughs> the external part is called the vulva. It includes the inner lips and the external portion of the clitoris. Both are made of the same embryonic tissue as the penis. And like the penis, both are chock full of touch-sensitive nerve endings and erectile tissue. The clitoris is the only organ in the human body, male or female, whose sole purpose is pleasure. The vast majority of women need external clitoral stimulation to reach orgasm. The orgasm gap is not the result of women's orgasms being difficult or elusive. It's the result of women not getting the clitoral stimulation they need during sexual encounters with men. In one survey, almost 80% of women said their difficulty reaching orgasm during a sexual encounter was not enough or not the right kind of clitoral stimulation. The stimulation men get when they pleasure themselves and intercourse are quite similar, whereas the way women pleasure themselves doesn't resemble intercourse at all. 
When women pleasure themselves, 99% stimulate their external clitoris, either alone or coupled with penetration. And when they do, almost all reach orgasm easily and within minutes. In fact, the amount of time it takes women and men to orgasm when pleasuring themselves is an almost identical four minutes. Many women know how to pleasure themselves when alone, yet when with men, they and their partners assume they should orgasm the same way men do, through intercourse. Very few women orgasm from intercourse alone. In anonymous surveys conducted across many years and with thousands and thousands of my students, only 4% say their most reliable route to orgasm is penetration alone. 4%. Let that sink in. The rest need clitoral stimulation. Yet despite the centrality of the clitoris to women's orgasms, we never learn about it in sex ed, and we rarely see it depicted in media images of sex. Instead, what we see is very little fooling around. The man puts his penis in the woman's vagina, and she's instantly like, oh, 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 yes! It's no wonder that the number one question women ask me is, how do I have an orgasm during intercourse? And demonstrating that the orgasm gap is not the result of men not caring about women's pleasure, the number one question men ask me is, how do I give a woman an orgasm during intercourse? The way women's and men's magazines answer this question is especially maddening. They publish articles on the best sex position for her orgasm, often without mentioning the clitoris at all. And the language used in these articles and in our culture as a whole reflects and perpetuates the overvaluing of male sexual pleasure that is at the heart of the orgasm gap. We use the words sex and intercourse as if they were one and the same. And we call everything that comes before intercourse foreplay, implying that it's just a lead up to the main and most important event, despite the fact that foreplay includes the type of external clitoral stimulation most likely to bring women to orgasm. And we call our entire genitals a vagina, therefore linguistically erasing the part of ourselves that gives us the most pleasure. We call our entire genitals by the part involved in penetration and male orgasm. If the tables were turned and we overvalued women's sexual pleasure, we would call foreplay sex and intercourse postplay. <laughs> But I am not suggesting we turn the tables. I am suggesting that we equally value both women's and men's most surefire route to orgasm. Borrowing the words of Dr. Peter Slavin, there cannot be true quality without equality. Quality sex is possible only with true sexual equality. Quality sex requires fighting the pervasive cultural belief that the way men most reliably reach orgasm should be the default way that both women and men reach orgasm. 
Together, let's stop calling intercourse sex. Let's stop calling our entire genitals a vagina. And let's place the clitoris in the public eye. I challenge you to start noticing and calling out unrealistic images of women's pleasure. And in your own most intimate heterosexual encounters, I challenge you to give equal importance to penetration and clitoral stimulation. Finally, I invite each and every one of you to join me in a new sexual revolution, a revolution for pleasure equality, because for people with clits, the revolution is coming. <laughs>